Welcome back, my name is Guy and this is the fourth and final video I'm doing of building this, which is a floating hall table. If you've missed the previous episodes, I'll leave a link in the corner for you to go take a look at those and catch up to where we are now. This time I'm going to be installing the ebony inlay around the top. I'm going to put a chemical on it to get it this cool antique cherry look. I'll be putting the whole piece together, putting a finish on it, and finally getting it installed on the wall. So stick around. Well here's the new top, it came out really, really nice. Uh, I've got it cut to size, I've got the groove routed for the inlay. There was also a very large defect that I put a, a bow tie in, or some people call that a Dutchman, six and one half dozen the other, to get rid of that defect. And I think it has a real nice visual detail to it. So instead of using epoxy this time, which I won't get caught doing that again, I bought this piece of ebony. Uh, very, very nice, very straight grained, very dark. So I've already made a test cut at the table saw to get that inlay cut and I just need to slice an eighth of an inch off the edge of this. Well, I'm going to cut the inlays from this ebony strip using my bandsaw. I've got an auxiliary fence taped to my fence this is just to make sure that this doesn't slide underneath there. And I've got my bandsaw set up to, set up to take a little bit under 3 16 of an inch. I'm going to try to get four strips from this. Uh, I only need three, but I'd rather have four just in case I break something or do something stupid, which I have been known to do. Now that I've got these strips cut, I'm just taking a small block plane. I just want to chamfer both sides of this on the bottom. It'll just make it a little bit easier to go in when I'm putting it in the grooves. Now I make a tool to do this. Unfortunately I don't have one so I'm just going to do it this way. It's going to take a few minutes but it's going to be well worth it and it's going to make it a lot easier to install. Well the inlay is ready to be set into the board and uh, these obviously aren't long enough to go the full length. So this first piece is going to go in. I've, I've used a shooting board and made that end square. I'm not going to mire the edges on this. It's black so you really won't see anything anyways. And on this end I put a 45 degree. Now the last piece I put in this side, I'm going to put the 45 on there and then a 90 on that end and hopefully you won't see that little bit of a joint there. So this piece is ready and I'm just going to take some glue and lay it in. I got that first piece in, went in no problem. Now I need to take the second piece and I need to get an idea how long it's going to be. It's about to there. Give myself a little bit of extra. Now that I've got this piece cut and I know this end is square to fit into that corner, I need to go to my shooting board and make a 45 right here so that meets with that one. So I've got this and it's going to fit in there. So I just need to get some glue in there and then get that piece in place. I've got that second piece in and uh, I've got a real nice tight joint. You're never going to be able to see it. I'm going to clean up that little bit of glue squeeze out right there because I don't want that to dry. I'm going to let this sit for about 20 minutes to a half hour and then I'm going to flush this so that when I put these pieces in, it's easier to flush these without this getting in the way. Well, I'm ready to start putting the pieces in for the curves. And I'm going to make this piece here is about 19 inches. I'm just going to put this end in, put the other end in, and then put the straight piece in. So there's going to be two seams. And the reason for this is, is this, I mentioned before, this ebony is extremely brittle. And when I put this in, I've got to pound it in and just be really careful when I make this curve. Otherwise, this is going to break. Uh, it might break. We're going to find out here real soon. So I've got the 45 here and a 90 here. And I just need to put some glue in. I put a mark where I need to stop putting the glue in and uh, get this piece in.
Well, this piece went in without a lot of drama. I'm just getting rid of a little bit of the glue squeeze out here on the board. I'm going to get rid of that in the groove, and I'm just going to do the other end, and then the last piece in the middle. I've given the inlay a couple hours to dry, and it should be all set. I'm just going to start flushing it with the block plane, and then finish up the card scraper. I've gotten all the ebony inlay very nice and flat to the surface of this, and I want to put an edge detail on here. It's just going to be an eighth of an inch round over, nothing fancy. I've also scabbed on a piece on both ends right here. I, don't, I want to make sure that when I go off the end, I don't accidentally come back. So this is just a, a small precaution. So that's what I was looking for. It's a very subtle round over. I just need to flip this over and do the bottom the same way. Well, the edge treatment is done. Uh, the piece is basically done. I need to start doing the surface prep. I'm going to start at 120, work my way up through the grits to 320. I'll probably do 400 on these edges here. And the apron will all have to be done by hand. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to dye this, but I am going to color the wood. I'm going to use a chemical called potassium dichromate. And uh, this is really nasty stuff. I don't use it that often, but on cherry it looks really good. It, it darkens the wood. I don't know exactly how it works or why it works, but it's kind of like ammonia on white oak. Uh, it darkens it, so you get that age look right away from it. I've got a mixture of it that I'm pretty happy with the, the, the color on. I've ran a few test pieces, and I just need to coat it with this. I'll let that potassium dichromate solution dry on the piece overnight, and this is the color I'm left with. It's, just, it's perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, and for once, it's even wife approved. Even more amazing. So it did raise the grain just a little bit. I'm going to go over this with 400 grit sandpaper, and because this chemical on here is highly toxic, uh, I'll be wearing a particulate mask. I'm going to have the air filter going, and then I'm going to wipe it down. It, Afterwards, I'm going to leave the shop for probably a half hour, 45 minutes, and let that air filter do its job and get rid of all the particulates in the air. I don't want to breathe any of this stuff in. Well, everything's ready now. I just need to start applying the finish. And I'm going to be using a shellac for this, and I'm going to be using garnet shellac. First two coats are going to go on pretty heavy, and I'm not going to sand in between but uh, I want to give that plenty of time to dry. And then after about 45 minutes to an hour, I'll come back and sand it down with probably 400 grit sandpaper. Well, those two first coats have dried, and I'm just going over the piece right now very lightly with 320 grit sandpaper. Just want to get rid of any dust nibs that may have developed and uh, also just generally flatten the finish. So after I get done here, I'll wipe it down. I'll probably end up putting maybe five, six, maybe even seven coats total when it's done. Well, I put the final coat of shellac on there. I end up putting seven coats on. And uh, I'm going to let this sit overnight to fully cure. And then tomorrow, I'll rub it all out with steel wool and then put some wax on it. Well, this is sat overnight, so the shellac is fully cured. I'm just going to start rubbing this flat with some... Uh, quadruple lot steel wool and make sure that I have a nice smooth finish. Well, I'm going to be attaching the top using these figure eights. If you've never seen them before, it's just a figure eight piece of metal with two holes drilled in it. And I'm just going to put a mark right here where this needs to go. There goes my furnace. Mark the other one. I'll put a total of five around the edge of the piece.
I'm gonna get rid of this. This is just a real quick and dirty stand out of plywood and MDF just to make life a little bit easier for me. There's three spots. This is screwed directly into the studs. This is not going anywhere. Uh, one spot I had to use toggles, but that's okay. And uh, it's perfectly level, which is nice. So I just need to attach the top and we're in business. Oh man, sound. <laughs> <laughs>